All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. And I'm delighted to welcome back Bob Miglani. How are you doing, Bob? I'm well, John. How are you? Yeah, and Bob is the author of two books so far, Embrace the Chaos and, and uh, Treat Your Customers. And today we're going to talk about this brand new book that uh, he has authored along with a, a friend of his who's an entrepreneur in India. Um, Bob uh, had a long career in, in Fortune 50 companies in, in the U.S., as well as starting out with his family business at a Dairy Queen store. And he has collaborated with a friend of his who's a venture capitalist, a very successful venture capitalist in India, an entrepreneur. And they have written a book called Make Your Own Luck. You want to show that to everybody, Bob? Sure, sure. Happy to. Make your own luck. Excellent. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Okay, Bob. So uh, when somebody sees a title like Make Your Own Luck, yes. um, they often go, okay, yeah, I mean, I get it, but but like I've tried it, but but I've never seemed to be able to make my own luck. Luck seems to evade me. It seems other people seem to be lucky. I'm never lucky. Right. Why not me? Why do other yeah. people make hundreds of millions of dollars or whatever, and how come I don't? Uh, that's a very good question. That's a question that I ask myself often throughout those years in, my, in sales and business and in life. And I think there's a couple of things that I learned, John, that might be interesting for your audience, uh, your listeners. I think the first is you know, that uh, we can only control really a certain part of life, right? So luck, maybe, maybe, 30% of it is completely random, right? Boy, being mm -hmm. born at the right place, the right time, right geography, family's got money, great college, whatever that might be, great, you know, that might be. 70% is controllable. So 30% may be completely random that you can't control, but good 70%, maybe 60% is under our control. And so that's the first thing is that we have choice. And so luck is less, not necessarily about chance, but it's about choice. And so the second part of this is, John, is that what are those choices that make us exceptionally, you know, to have exceptional growth? And that's what we wrote about in Make Your Own Luck. Rehan and I, my friend Rehan and I talked over several years. He's a successful entrepreneur. I grew up in the U.S. in business. And so, but we put together our, these seven core secrets of success that are in our control. And they're the choices that we make, which are unusual, that are different that in a way invite randomness to come into your life. And I was telling you, John, before, earlier, mm -hmm. it started, the story started with myself and Rehan having a dinner together in Mumbai. I was there right. on business. And he had invested $100,000 in a company and it turned into $100 million, which is mm -hmm. like, holy cow, that's incredible. Right, and right. So I got lucky. And I said, well, I laughed. I said, well, I didn't get that lucky in my career at Pfizer. You know, <laughs> I wish I was everybody yeah, yeah. that lucky. And so we started dissecting and un, you know, peeling back, if you will, the onion, if you will, and finding out what were those things. And so it was, it was, it was decisions, it was choices that he made mm. by chances that he was given, right? So you sort of encounter those things and those choices that you make that are different, that put him in the spot to invest that money. And the rest of it is completely not under your control. And so those are the kind of things we talk about in Make Your Own Luck. It's really about choices that you make that are different than everybody else's. Yeah, and it seems to me, uh, Bob, right, is that a lot of people, I would say, and, and maybe we all fall, we are probably all fall victim to this at times, though we focus on the 30% that we can't control, right? And we use that as maybe an excuse to not address the 60 or 70% that we can actually control. Yeah, and it's easy to do that because it's so overwhelming. You almost sort of say, why? Why me? You know, why not? Mm -hmm. You know, why not? Why can't I give you? I'll give you an example, John. It's in the book, you know, Make Your Own Luck. And one of the things is when I left, um, when I left Pfizer, you know, I was with Pfizer for 23 years, started as a successful you know, sales rep with the corporate ladder. I worked at a startup and it was, I was head mm -hmm. of business development for this startup, publicly listed company, a small company. I thought I knew everything about the pharmaceutical industry and the healthcare industry because I'd been, you know, 23 years, a long time. So mm -hmm. I walk into a sales call, a pitch with another good, a good size, big pharmaceutical company. I made the pitch. I thought I knew everything. So I was this new technology. I was pitching with a couple of other people. We went in there and it was about 10 people in the room, John, and it was tough. 
it was really difficult. I got beaten down because I couldn't handle the objections in a way that was thoughtful and actually it didn't make sense. And so I walked away from that rejection. We got rejected. It was really rejected. Yeah. Really, you know, rejected. I came out saying, well, what do they know? You know, I'm the one who's the expert. I knew 23 years. But then over the course of several months, I, I, that, that thing bothered me. Why wasn't I lucky to get that, that, that mm -hmm. pitch? I think that sales call effective. And I looked into myself, looked internally, and I said, you know what? I've got to look at this from a different perspective. And so what I did was have what's called, in Japanese, uh, in Buddhism, they call it shoshin, which is the beginner's mind. In the beginner, mm. in the expert's mind, there are few possibilities or solutions. But in a beginner's mind, the opportunities are endless. And so I started looking at this and put my ego aside, right? That's very important is this ego. I put the ego aside and started reflecting on the criticism that I received in that sales call. And what I learned is that their criticism was accurate. And so what I learned to do was to think through how I was going to address that criticism in a better, more effective way. And it relied on me to control those things, to learn better, to think, you know, and come up, become more re resourceful, become more creative, and to develop a different strategy for meeting those customers. Mm -hmm. And so in one of the chapters in the, in the book is that, in Make Your Own Luck is, you have to have a beginner's mind, meaning put the ego aside, think about how you would look at this from somebody else's lens, not your lens. And so it's not about being an expert and saying, I know all of these things. I'm going to focus on the 30% that, you know, that is, that, is, uh, that is bothering me, but I'm going to really try to learn, understand, and to grow within. That's really the core thing. So have a beginner's mindset if you want to grow your sales. Yeah, it's, it's a great point because, uh, let's face it, uh, to do that, right, you obviously, I mean, that's a little bit vulnerable to begin with, right, uh, is, to, is to clear your expertise away and, and come at it. But it's funny because we also live in this world where everybody's branding themselves, right? So everybody seems to be a complete expert. So if you're going to clear your mind and have a beginner's mindset, you're kind of, I mean, that's... Yeah, that's quite a difficult thing to do because you're faced by what you perceive are all of these experts out there when in reality, a lot of it is yes. branding, let's face yes. it. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. I mean, the way I've been able to learn from that, you know, one of my lessons learned, uh, John, is that ask, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's sort of a, you know, simple thing, but uh, be honest and ask. Now, after those meetings I had where I, you know, got my butt handed to me, you know, <laughs> Uh, you know, working in that startup, I became, you know, the shift was from starting in a new job, you know, sales, business development job to some who actually made deals and become success. The shift was me in the way I approached the market and the customers. And what I did was I took the ego out and started asking, asking questions and listening very intently. And what I would say to them, look, I don't know. And it was the supply chain industry. And so I said, look, I don't know supply chain. I know, right. you know, branding and pharma and your marketing. I don't know what you do every day. Please tell me. And so a lot of times we go into these meetings, these sales pitches, and we talk a lot. And the reality is that what we should be doing is listening because you're not going to get that chance again. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. this is really about less about saying, me, 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 look at me, look how expert I am. Actually, I'm not. I'm not an expert in your field. And the way I came across to the new customers that I was pitching was they would tell me how they would use my product. And right, that, right. to me, was, was the, the breakthrough. That really moved, shifted me from no sales to you know, a lot of sales. And let's face it, there's nothing that people uh, appreciate more than that curiosity from another person, right? And so you're interested in, oh, so you're really interested in what I do? Oh, okay, well, let me tell you about it, right? Which is a lot better than you obviously coming in and trying to tell me what I do when you clearly don't know what I do, right? Right. But the, cur the curiosity piece. But there's another part I just wanted to go back to is this concept of choice, right? And this fascinates me because choice, I, I, I've seen this and experiences myself and I've seen this in other people, is choice just paralyzes people. And, and often, you know, people are obviously making choices by not making choices, right? It's a choice in itself, but they don't see it that way. But what, why, is, why are making choices, placing bets, all of that, why is that so, so difficult for people? Well, I think we, it's hard for us to predict what's going to work and what's not going to work. I think that mm -hmm. becomes the issue is that we second guess ourselves and we say, well, this is going to work. This is not going to work. Uh, or if you try it and you get negative feedback, 
I think that is the heart of what it is, is that we just don't know. It's that uncertainty of what choice is going to work. And because what happens is, I think, you know, in many cases, we look at somebody else who's made that choice. Or we might have made a choice in the past. We made a decision to do something, and it didn't work out. And right. so we often go back to, well, it's not going to work. We predict what's going to work. And one of the core chapters in our book, in Make Your Own Luck, John, that we wrote very clearly, and the first, first chapter actually is Be Obsessively Curious. So that's just, you know, there's a, there's a piece to that. But one of the most important lessons we wrote is have multiple plan A's. So here's mm -hmm. the point. Here's the concept. The concept is in business, in sales, we have this one strategy. We think, oh, it's going to work. It's going to work. One choice we make, we're going to make it happen. And what happens? We try it. We spend months. We spend hours. We spend a lot of money doing it. It doesn't work. And what do we do? We go to plan B. And, that, and we take time. We go to plan C, right? What happens? We lost time. What we're saying mm -hmm. instead is, instead of having one go-to thing, do two or three things, invest a little bit of money, and try to do two or three things, and see what works, and see what doesn't. What happens is, one, you gain time. So instead of saying A, B, C, you do plan A, plan A, plan A, multiple plan A's, mm -hmm. and you see which one works. So you gain time, you get feedback right away, you get consequence right away, result right away. And second, second thing is, the marketplace is the best determinant of what's going to work and what's not. Sure. Not you, not the ego. Mm -hmm. And so often I say is that if you want to think about choice, it's not about your choice. It's about the customer's choice. So what that means is put something out there, get to the market, see what's going to work. And ultimately that you get that result. And if you get a good result, we'll do more. If you get a bad result, don't do it, learn from it and move on. And so multiple plan A's is what we're saying. Instead of having plan A, B, C, have A, B, E. Always be experimenting. Yes, always be experimenting, trying a few new things and see which works and see what's not going to work. And that ultimately is that, because you're never going to be able to predict. You know, human beings are not very good, John, mm -hmm. to your point, of making choices. I've made a lot of bad choices in my career, in my life. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you is there's some good ones and some bad ones. So the yeah. key is try as many as you possibly can to see what the market says. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I agree with that. And I think also the fact is, I think, yes, you you make choices that maybe don't have the results that you're expecting. Um, you know, and obviously sometimes bad choices, but generally speaking, the choices you make lead somewhere. And wherever you end up today are, are, are a result of the choices that you've made. And so I think sometimes you got to look at them as, you know, choices. Yes, it didn't have the outcome I was expecting, but it had yeah. a different outcome and it led to something else. And for, but it's forward momentum as opposed to staying, staying put right yeah. and never taking chances. I got my first job um, at Pfizer as a sales rep after a rejection. I wrote a letter to Pfizer many years ago, applied for a job in sales. I got a very nice rejection letter. Pfizer saying, dear Bob, sorry, you're not, you know, I'm not experienced. Mm -hmm. And I put it aside. I looked at it a, a day later and it had a phone number at the bottom, John. So I called the phone number and I said, Hey, can I get an interview? You know, I just want a shot. And I got the assistant to the vice president of sales. And she said, well, what do you want? You know, so I said, well, I got this very nice letter from you that says, you know, you got rejected. And so I, and so she said, no, you have your answer, honey. He was very nice to me. His assistant, his, his assistant. She said, you have, got, you have got your answer. I said, okay, thank you very much. I hung up the phone. So I called her the next day and the next day and the next day. I called her for 20 days and it was persistence to call her. But mm -hmm. it was a choice that I made to pick it up, a rejection letter. And 20 days later, guess what? I got five minutes on the phone with the vice president of sales. He said, you got an hour in an interview, 30 days from now, show up at this office. I had my right. first job interview at Pfizer at which time, and then what I did was I studied. I went to the library and I read 30 of the best books about sales and what makes great salespeople. And I was prepared. I was really prepared. And I pitched and I got the job. Here's, so here's the lesson that I learned from that experience is that, one, of course, persistent. But the second is it's your choice to take that rejection and do something with it. You can either put it aside or the second thing is you can take action. And to mm -hmm. me, it's, it's momentum happens when you take action. And yeah. yes, it's hard. It, took, it was hard to make the phone call. It was hard to say, well, you know, I'm not good enough. I don't have the experience. I looked at that letter. But the choice we make is up to us. 
you know, that's why I say is make your own luck. It's about ownership. It's about personal responsibility. Yeah. And so that's what, that was Lisa's success. Yeah. And I love that piece because basically what you're saying is you're saying, I'm not going to accept your, your, your decision or, or your opinion of me. Now. I'm not going to accept that. I'm going, I'm going to, I'm going to own this. I'm going to move forward. I don't believe I'm not good yes. enough. Uh, you don't believe I'm not good enough right now. Well, I'm going to convince you. Like, that's right. very different from saying, okay, then you must be right. I'm useless. I'm just going to go home and mope. Yes. We give up way too easily. And, and one of the other lessons we put in here, John, in make your own luck is uh, take the hard path. Okay. Mm -hmm. When we do what's hard, it's hard to follow. When we do what's easy, it's easy to copy and follow. And yeah. too often in business, in marketing, in our sales, we take the easy road, the easy path. We send yeah. an email out, John, we've, sent, we've done our job. We've sent an email to a prospect and we've done our job. You know what? That's not good enough. What about taking a video, putting it on uh, the email and embedding it and sending it out? What about sending a text message? What about reaching out to them on LinkedIn? These are hard things. They take time. They take energy, mm -hmm. right? We're studying the prospect in more depth. So what we yeah. find, I always find is that the mind is a muscle and it requires tension and resistance to grow. If you don't push against what's hard, if you don't do what's hard, you're never going to grow. And when we do that, when we push through the obstacle and do what's hard, two things happen. One, you're really forced to be creative. Okay, you've mm -hmm. got to find the places, you've got to find the people, you've got to find the resources to get creative to break through that obstacle. The second thing that happens is it, no one else does it. You know, yeah. so many people, John, don't do what's hard. They do what's just the bare minimum. And what happens is you then in a marketplace where no, when you, what we call is that you built a moat around your mm -hmm. expertise, right? No one could go over that moat. And so do what's hard because it's, it's hard to follow. And so one of the biggest things I learned in working in startups, John, over the years is that, You've got to really have that moat because these yeah. days everyone is trying to do the same thing. And so yeah. if you really want to grow, build that moat and do what's hard. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And obviously, um, you know, that old adage, you know, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Yes. Um, so that's, I mean, when you went and you studied really hard for that interview, you know, people say, oh, your Bob's really lucky he got that one. No, he actually worked really hard to get it. Exactly. And in fact, the $100 million story of my co-author of uh, Rehan in this book was that he was an entrepreneur in India, all places, right? And he grew up there. He got a pitch from a small startup that was about uh, busing and he passed on mm -hmm. that. But he was interested. He said, oh, what's about this busing business? And so he started learning about ground transportation in India, a big market. Just started learning mm -hmm. about it. He spent nine mm -hmm. months just deep diving, learning everything he could, talk to people, read a lot of things. He forgot about it. But a year and a half later, he forgot, you know, a year and a half later, He's at a buffet at a luncheon for entrepreneurs and he's in line and this kid comes up to him. This young guy comes up to him and says, listen, I have this idea for a cab service on your phone and, uh, you know, being able to get a cab anytime you want. He says, okay, well, I'll, you know, I'll spend some time with you talking to you. And so a guy talked to him and pitched him for this company called Ola Cabs. And it, he said, you know, it's like uh, this, this, this cab company. So my, my friend, my co-author, he got it. He got the idea right away. Because he spent a year and a half ago, yeah. nine months, understanding deeply that market. So he said, all right, mm -hmm. I'll invest. He went to a bunch of people around. He said, hey, do you want to invest in this company? And no one said yes. So he wrote the first check all by himself for the entire you know, raise of that round. Mm -hmm. That company launched at the same time Uber did. And it's the Uber of India. Basically, it's Ola Cabs. Actually, they're better than Uber in India. Right. And then SoftBank came in. So that 100000 went to a hundred million dollars. And I think today it's worth like 75 million or so. But the point is, did he get lucky? Partly, yes, he could control those yeah. things, but you know what? Sure. No, he didn't. Because he But he was prepared. He was prepared. It's yeah. luck is preparation meets opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so what we focus on in this book, Make Your Own Luck, John, is really about those seven things you have to do today to make yourself different, to how you can get, become better, have a beginner's mind, be exceptionally curious, and have multiple plan A's. That's what we really talk about. Yeah, that's fantastic. Listen, Bob, great, great to end. Um, before we go, can you tell people a little bit more about you and how they can learn more? Sure. 
I'm Bob Miglani. I'm a best-selling author. I'm a keynote speaker on change and growth and disruption. I do workshops and speaking for companies. And I do also leadership coaching to help leaders move to the next level. So my website is bobmiglani.com. The book is called Make Your Own Luck. You can get it on Amazon today. And I uh, wish you great luck, luck and success. Thank you, John. Yeah, and, and also it'll be available also on Sales Pop on uh, Bob's profile. So you can li- it'll be a link there to Amazon so you can get the book as well. Listen, Bob, this is uh, great. Uh, glad you could come back and um, delighted and, and very excited about the new book. I think it's a, it's a timely one. Listen, there's opportunity out there if you go and make it for yourself. Just go yes. grab it. Absolutely. All right, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. Thanks, Bob. See you off another expert interview really soon. Take care.